I'm increasingly seeing how dramatic I am and finding it quite embarrassing. <laughs> um, and I'm deliberately not using the term drama queen because I don't think it's a gendered issue. <laughs> um, it's not a feminine thing to be dramatic. I just think it's a product of self-centeredness, actually, self-preoccupation. And so I've just been watching uh, my own dramatic, uh, inflammatory responses to things that I don't like or that I don't want. Um, as much as you can in a monastery, like there's been no kicking or screaming, um, <laughs> But I can see that I'm still being pushed around quite strongly by my afflictions, um, creating big deals out of things that perhaps don't need to be related to in that way. Um, but I am because it's happening to me. Um, and recently, uh, Venerable Children gave teachings on the seven point mind training. Um, and that sparked just some recollection of those teachings. Um, I spent one winter retreat looking into a few commentaries on that um, and bathing in those um, beautiful teachings that really target self-centeredness for a few months and um, found it quite nourishing. It had a big impact on my mind. And Alex Burzen, his um, website, Study Buddhism, has a great number of resources, including his own commentary, his holiness's commentary, and just different... Um, writings on this um, thought transformation teachings. And he has this one concept called nothing special. And that came to mind as I was thinking about wanting to try and turn it down a bit in terms of my drama. And so his idea about mind training is this thing of nothing special. There's nothing special about what I'm feeling and there's nothing special about me. And so it starts with the premise that we make a big deal about our feelings. We run towards and try and grab the pleasant, pleasant feelings, however, whatever object or person or situation that we personally find that they come from. We push violently away the unpleasant feelings, and with neutral ones, we get incredibly broad and try and look for the next thing to entertain ourselves, to have constant entertainment. Um, he uses the example of one of his aunts who has the TV on constantly, like 24 hours a day, so even when she wakes up, there's some comforting noise there just for some, you know, the silence is just uncomfortable. The neutrality of the silence is, is um, yeah, can't be had. So as opposed to that, to try and zoom out a bit and see like there's nothing at all special about what I'm feeling. Life goes up, life goes down. What do I expect? There's nothing surprising about this at all. And particularly this thing of like, there's nothing so special about me that I shouldn't feel certain things or have certain experiences. What's so special about me that I shouldn't encounter mental or physical pain or criticism or blame or even great praise or whatever it is. It's like, the main thing is like, regardless of whatever I'm feeling, just get on with life. <laughs> um, you know, get rid of the pity party. Um, or the distraction by the elation. It's just, you no, know, just carry on with things that need to get done in a very expansive, calm way. And it's not that we're trying to stop our feelings. We can't do that, it's not actually possible. Or to ignore them, that's not beneficial. Especially if it's inciting afflictions, we need to recognize them, antidote them, work with them. But to not make such a big deal out of it. Um, and this brought me back to one of my, uh, favorite poems um, by Jamgong Kuntrul Lojo Taie, where in one phrase he says, this alternation of joys and sufferings is like the cycle of the seasons. Without realizing this, how could I get tired of cyclic existence? With the certainty that suffering will again be my lot, may I sincerely practice the Supreme Dharma. So this is just like calm, expansive acceptance of that, yeah, my internal feelings and my moods as an unenlightened being are going to come up. Are they going to come down again and again? What do I expect? Can I hold it all just a little bit more lightly? And interesting, at the beginning of this um, quite long um, verse uh, poem by Jamgyun um, Kontro Lojo Taye, the, one of those, the second verse after his praise to the Buddhas, he says, this human life is as fleeting as a dream. Whether it is happy or unhappy, 
May I, without caring about joys and sorrows, sincerely practice the Supreme Dharma. It floors me every time because it's like, wow, I'm so still caught up about happinesses and sorrows. I care about whether I'm happy or unhappy, and it's a distraction to me being able to practice consistently. Um, and this, you know, this is precious human life. It's like, make use of your precious human life. And in order to do that, we can't be so distracted by the ups and the downs. So there's nothing special about what I'm feeling. No drama. And then digging deeper to get at this self-centered thought, there's absolutely nothing special about me. And again, this comes down to, uh, you know, the narrower the mind, the more unhappier we are. The more fixated I am on me and mine, the unhappier I am. And I love this uh, imagery that um, Alex uses in terms of like, it's like a, a muscle that is tight and tense. Me, 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 me. <laughs> Just this image of this contracted muscle squeezing itself and being in pain was very helpful for me to just say, oh yes, that's what I'm doing. It feels like that. My mind is tight. My body actually, when I'm in dramatic mode and in my body is actually tight and squeezed as well as my mind is incredibly unpleasant. And yeah, so to kind of broaden the view again in terms of like, wow, there's eight other human, eight, uh, eight other, eight billion other, <laughs> just eight, um, eight billion other human beings on this planet and they're all having pleasant, unpleasant and neutral feelings, constantly change and constantly cycle. What is so special about what I am feeling right now in that context? And that's just the human beings. In that context, there's nothing special. And so just thinking it, about it in this way, then, it, then that itself is just a happier, more relaxed way to exist, taking into the account the experience of other living beings. Um, and then like using this example of sitting in traffic, so we can um, get wound up by the fact that we have to be somewhere and the traffic isn't moving and me, 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 me. Or explain it as like, you know, if there's a traffic jam, we are necessarily not the only one sitting there not moving. <laughs> You know, can we get curious about the experience of others who may have something even more important that they where they need to be or having some more un, you know, similar experiences? And again, this comes back to one of the main antidotes given in the seven point mind training, which is Tonglen. Really um, recognizing our own pain and suffering and self-centeredness, and then you know, broadening it out to use the um, suffering and pain of others to smash, get rid of our own tight painful self-preoccupation. And so I was to read out this the beautiful conclusion um, in this kind of explanation of this idea of nothing special from Alex Burroughs. And he says, there's nothing special about what's happening. There's nothing special about me and nothing special about what I'm feeling. It's just flowing on and on and on driven by innumerable causes and conditions interacting with each other. We just need to deal with it in, a, in as beneficial way as possible, using our intelligence and imagination to empathize with ourselves and others. So I am finding this uh, concept of nothing special very soothing to my uh, dramatic mind um, and thought I'd to offer that as um, I'm probably not the only one.